Oh, uh, sorry. This, this <laughs> Teachers Teaching Teachers, it's the 2nd of September, is that correct? I think so. Um, 2020, and uh, people were gathering, and I wanted this to be on the kept part of the tape. So Tanya Baker just asked, um, Rich. sorry, Rich Novak, um, how school was, and you said, Rich, I said it, you know, it's great to see students. I'll tell you what, that was nice. I got yeah, I eight, eight students at a time in front of me uh, doing a hybrid model. Um, but it's different. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. How often do you get to see those eight students? It's, I, I, I don't even, like, <laughs> Next Whenever week, they I, show up, <laughs> I'm gonna let it all play out. It's all, it's a little, you know. I kind of always do that anyway, but this year is extra special. <laughs> <laughs> that somebody tweeted that his, his son was going to be in school, yeah, school a Thursday in in September and two Fridays in October. <laughs> that was returning to school. I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> all right. I could see it if you got one class or something, you know, like it's totally possible. Cause like I, there's this class, I might not see this in like two weeks, like a week and a half or, you know what I mean? So let's uh, keep checking in uh, kind of quickly here. Um, there, uh, there's Anna and Brian, you're, why don't you say hello, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm I'd Brian. Like pick on the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'm in Salt Lake City. I actually teach uh, with Chris Sloan at Judge. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been using uh, at least Youth Voices uh, for a few years and uh, looking to find ways to get better, <laughs> see what works, you know, that kind of thing. So happy to be here. Very cool. Seems like um, a good segue to me, don't you think? Go for it. Well, uh, Brian actually emailed me today and said, hey, are you using Youth Voices again? And I said, well, <laughs> why don't we just talk about it tonight? Funny you should ask. <laughs> OK, cool. So uh, we'll come back to that question. Anna, welcome. What's going on in your city, your school? Um, well, the whole state of California is currently on fire, as I'm sure you know. Um, but it seems to be getting better, which is good. Um, I just got home. I was out you delivering. You would be surprised at how little we pay attention to that, honestly. No, so no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, since I moved out here, I've realized Californians are very, like, self-involved. We're like our own country over here. We don't know what's going on in the rest of the country either. Some have su suggested seceding. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Anyway, sorry. So <laughs> how's that... If, How's that impacting your teaching life? It's it? not, it's not really. Um, I, there were some power outages that we thought was gonna, might affect distance learning, but it, it hasn't really. Mostly what we've been dealing, like I just got home today. I was out picking up like hotspots and chargers and we're in the third week of school and it's, there's still things that need to be distributed. So. You're picking them up and delivering them to kid, students' mm -hmm. homes? Mm hmm Yep. Cool. Yep. Okay. Um, Tanya, do you want to introduce yourself? And, Hi, and I'm Tanya can... Baker from, I work at the National Writing Project. I live outside of Berkeley near Anna, and I don't have a classroom, so I live vicariously through teachers teaching teachers. <laughs> welcome. Nikki, welcome. Hi. Nikki Fain, Teacher Education, Lehman College. Cool. Jessica, let's get everybody Jessica, in there. Jessica Hernandez here. I teach um, English in the Bronx, New York. And New York City has been delayed till the 21st, although you go in next week. Is that right? right. We go in on uh, Tuesday. The entire city gets a week long orientation starting the 16th and then on the 21st whoever's coming in comes in cool. that is really late nice first it was better than nothing brian yeah. brian and chris will be like uh you know into your second marking period <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> all 
But you guys take off for skiing, right? Don't you? <laughs> Keep it up, Paul. <laughs> I think this yeah. is a ruse to get all the holidays out of the way. Yeah, really. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> I'm Karen Chaudhary. I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School in um, New York City in Manhattan. Um, we're a public uh, high school in the New York City Department of Education. And um, uh, we, my school is a small progressive school. We um, started back, the faculty started back in our customary um, uh, August, late August week on uh, Monday. So today's Wednesday. So this is the fifth meeting I've been in since 8 a.m. So <gasps> cheers. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but it's the beginning uh, of the semester. So always the beginning of even in COVID. I'm incorrigible. The beginning of the semester is always exciting, right? You're not behind in grading. <laughs> you have, I mean, it's way beginning. Meaning. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's the honeymoon. But what I'm looking forward to is actually um, kids, like I'm teaching ninth graders. Uh, they're new to high school, new to our school. They don't know anyone. They don't know each other. They're coming from um, the four outer boroughs um, into Manhattan where it's too expensive to live. And, um, and they're not going to be on video or audio. Be oh, because um, you're going to see them. Unless, uh, unless they can stand... It, you know, it's so hard to have to watch yourself being watched. Like, mm -hmm. who can, I cannot fault them. Plus, it takes more bandwidth to use the video and the audio. There's a whole host of reasons why it's hard for them. Have all your meetings today been virtual? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is a way to turn, bless you, there is a way Thank to you. turn off your own view though i think do you just this put it on intro who didn't introduce herself yet but hi okay. yeah you can do you remember how sorry Paul. It's okay. do you just put it in speaker view and then click the one bar so you can't see the... there, there's a way to not under the three dots up in the top right hand corner you can hide self view Oh, and everybody can see you, but you don't have to look at yourself. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, it could get you through a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> you might forget that you're being seen. It's yeah. true. You do have to remember other people can still see you. <laughs> okay, I'm going right. to try this. All right, so. We're, oh, I'm sorry. I was just. Uh, am Go I ahead. We I are. We're going to be going live in our, our classrooms, I think, and having the the video live stream, but not like live stream where you're, you know, putting out to everybody, but just to our classmates. So it's kind of a brave new world with that, you know, just, um, and teachers are, are just starting to process. What does that mean? How do you do it? Like with the equipment we have. So we'll have say, say that one more time. What is yeah. It? So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's interesting to hear Karen say that, you know, you're going to have so little video, like. There's a real, it sounds like there's a demand to have video. I don't know where that demand's coming from and why, but we are being now asked to um, have uh, a presence on a Google Meet to basically connect our hybrid cohorts. Because basically what happens is the class is split into two. One group is there, the other group is home, and then they switch the next day. That's then, exactly yeah, what we're doing. Oh, you are doing that. But, but we have to, you know, they would like us to have a, a presence on Google Meet. Um, and I think some, you know, we, we, today, it was just really, what was, today what I loved today was walking around the building, kind of want to get this news, and just watching teachers all, like, you know, unplugging cords and, like, trying, all right, so if I put this cord here and put this up with the projector and, and there's feedback with this and, you know, like, and I'm walking around the building and everybody is doing the same thing without even talking to you. It was, it was like, really encouraging, you know? It's like, we're in it together, you know? Are they using Swivel 
or something? Uh, what swivel? I don't know. It's a camera that follows the... Oh. the right now, all we have for equipment is just our Chromebooks. Really, that's the only thing that's going to give us a computer, you know, a, a microphone with a video uh, a camera. So how do you have the kids at home see you teaching if so, you're projecting on the projector for yes yeah, so well that's i mean i mean so like basically the idea is we're going to have google classroom and in google classroom we'll have a link to our google meet that's i don't you know how we'll facilitate we'll do that um and then there'll also be some kind of task or lesson plan or something for students to tack on to and be part of in addition to just then there's also going to be like the video there's, and that could be the video stream it could just be the video stream you know i can imagine teachers doing this different ways i plan to have like a google doc as a, a touchstone and then the video um and then i haven't really figured it out yet you know <laughs> i you know i have some ideas oh maybe we could switch to Chris and Brian and hear you guys talk about what you're up to. You're a yeah, few this, weeks this in. Definitely deja vu. Uh, <laughs> Brian, you want to you want to lead off here? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so our we're in a hybrid model. Um, we have uh, we have we've switched to a block schedule, which we our schedule was pretty funky beforehand, um, but now we go four classes uh, Monday for uh, periods one through four Monday, four through eight. Tuesday and we have half the kids in person those days and half the kids uh, distance. Wednesday is sort of like office hours. Um, it's been kind of nice and then we flip it and we go one through four Thursday, one, uh, five through eight Friday. And so we're, we're trying to have new instruction those four block days. So whether or not you're home or away, you're, you're getting something new. Um, you know, we're still definitely working out the kinks for sure. Um, they've asked us to to record uh, our classes, but uh, Chris and I have talked about how uh, we don't know how effective that is or what what the use of that would be. But and so um, we don't. Yeah, so we haven't yet, uh, and I don't really have plans to unless unless they really find a necessity for it. But um, yeah, we were actually just talking about this stuff in a uh, meeting today about, you know, what's working, what's not, and getting used to, you know, addressing kids that are on your screen and keeping the attention of the kids that are in class. And that's, uh, you know, it changes the way, you know, you operate the classroom for sure. Um, you know, I don't feel like I can move around as much as I, as I normally would and kind of brings down energy. But... Um, you know, I would say by and large so far, um, our, our kids are happy to be back in some way and connected again with their friends and teachers and just being in the building that um, it, it's been really well received by them. I mean, we don't, I don't have any, any data to show how well it's working yet, but um, you know, I, I think the, the student body I feel is, is really putting their, their best foot forward on it and they're, they're understanding with us. I think uh, when we kind of fumble, you said people take pulling cords and stuff. I mean, every morning there's an email about some kind of problem somebody's having and it's, it's, uh, but it, it's been okay. I think, um, I don't know what your thoughts are, Chris, if it's been successful for you or not, but. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been going well. Um, I just be patient with myself. Uh, and so I didn't try to do too much. So we have uh, our desktop computer, uh, and then we also have an iPad in the room, which is maybe some people are using like a science teacher or math teacher. The iPad is focused on their board while they're writing notes, and um, you know their other thing can project uh, their presentation or what have you. So I just did, you know, I just did my desk and pretty much move around my desk for the people in the room and then the people on Zoom so they can see me both at the same time. But there are discrete tasks. Sometimes the, like Brian and I both uh, take advantage of taking classes outside for part of the class. Uh, and so when those times are happening, um, I think same with you, Brian, I totally unplug. Yeah. So there is no tech uh, there's no digital tech when we do that it's like let's read some books let's write 
with pens on paper. And I think they've really been liking it, if you can do that, if your campus permits. But the one thing I was thinking was, Kieran, was uh, when you said you've got these ninth graders coming in, the, the ninth grade teacher today was saying how the freshmen, and I've heard this because I teach some ninth graders too, how I, it's already awkward for them to be mm -hmm. coming into a new school, and in your case, like this very different place, but then to have masks and socially distance I'm hearing from the ninth graders, like, I, it's really hard to meet people and get to know them. So that's like uh, something they're struggling with, in addition to being awkward <laughs> and all that stuff. So that's something to think about, Kieran, is, is how we can get them to try to, try to connect with one another, um, because it's going to be more disconnected than ever, is going to be my guess. Yeah, but there's lots to say about the setup that... Rich, we could probably help you think through some of that stuff. But that's my initial thoughts on how things are going. Uh, yeah, and it's still the honeymoon period. I think like they're tolerant right now. But <laughs> the more I'm like, wait, there's someone in the waiting room. Uh, I don't know how long that'll last. But You're in week three. Yeah, we're in our deep into week three now. Yeah. So give it a week. <laughs> So we can feel free to keep going like this a little bit. Um, I, I, Brian, I wanted to put you on the spot and okay. ask, you said you've been, <laughs> you've been using Youth Voices for a few years now. Can you sort of say, you know, the impact that has had on your teaching and why you want to use it again, maybe? And um, yeah. yeah, so, I, you know, I still find myself uh, fumbling. I, you know, uh, when I started teaching um, seniors, uh, Chris had some senior sections too, and we were, we were teaching the same, the same course, different, different sections, and he was using it, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, the way, what I like about it is, um, you know, the, the writing that I have the students do, um, while I, I sort of prescribe some guidelines about how much should be there and some of the things you should include, like, you know, links and quotes, um, I, uh, I like it because it really allows them to develop, uh, they can invent what they want to talk about. And so um, it, it's fun that way because I get to see all of these things that the kids are thinking about. And many of them use things they're doing in other courses as the content for their post in my class, which I think is great. Um, and then something, you know, one of the things I picked up with, from Chris was having my own students comment on um, uh, some students from Judge and then other posts from other schools. And I like that because it gives us a chance to teach them how to interact that way, which I don't know how many of them have really gone through any kind of like, not training, but sort of just like, hey, this is maybe something you ought to think about when you're commenting on something you read uh, online. Um, and so I think it, it opens their view a little bit. I, I really like it. It's another component. Um, they get to write in that medium, um, which I think, you know, they'll need. And so, I mean, I have fun with it. I, I, I want to, I want to get better. I want to make it more, um, I, I want to, I, hopefully it's something they seek to do oftentimes with my crew. You know, there's, there's a few that are just obviously, you know, checking some boxes there. Um, but uh, we get a lot of good stuff that comes through. And I think they really like to read what other kids are writing and thinking about across the country. And so that's been fun. Can you say more about what you think the medium is? Well, I guess, I guess writing digitally for other people to see. Um, okay. I, I don't know if that's the right term, but uh, getting it out of like, for having a wider audience of people that might be their, their peers. I mean, they write digitally for me on like Google docs and they submit that. But for me, that's, that seems a little different than, than what we have going on with youth voices. Cool. Anybody want to jump in with questions or thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I just think that that is in general, the name of the game, you know, when it comes to writing and just like, in, in as we go into Corona now and like things like masks and how, you know, how am I going to get to know a student? Like I immediately want writing to be one of the things that kind of takes the mask off a little bit. Right. And 
want you know just sharing in general before we, you know beyond just youth voices like I, I think that's what makes youth voices really powerful is that there's like there's a genuine audience on the other side of the world doing the same thing and like there's like there is that just that aspect of true publishing and i think you know you can do that on a small sale just on a day-to-day -to -day too just sharing but you know i'm really looking forward to i always really look forward to to seeing not only like what students all say but just kind of seeing in a discussion or something how they bounce off of each other on something that some students kind of starts and just keeps it going you know yeah it makes me think that as you were as brian and you and chris were describing your classroom i was wondering i was worried about the connections youth are making with each other like are they able to talk to each other um oops. Yeah, that came up today in our, our meeting that Chris and I had with the English department earlier was um, people were talking about having breakout rooms um, where they would have kids that are in class on a Zoom, uh, in, a, in a room with someone that's at home on the Zoom, and, and they spoke of it as just an, an, a way for them to connect. And somebody brought up the point, I forget who it was, but they said, you know, they, they're back in school, but their their best friend might be at, at home and not on the same schedule and, and just that connection. And like you said, sometimes it's, it's sharing, but discussion with those folks, um, you know, can break down some of the separation, I think. Yeah. And one of the things that I thought was curious today was that some of the people felt like, and I, I don't know if this is the right word, but it was, it was more intimate or it was, uh, they felt like it works better when it's via, zoom or you know meet or whatever because the masks are off and they actually can do these communication with people that in face to face is actually harder which is really strange to me because you always hear like oh you know face to face is so much better than virtual and you know and in this case it seems like uh communication when teachers have one-on-one -on -one with students virtually uh that that seems to be the most honest or uh, you know, bearing of souls or whatever. I don't know if teachers bear their souls with the students, but it seems like it's more connected virtually without mass, which was kind of a new one for me. And I see you shaking your head. Do you wanna, since I can see you, do you wanna jump in? <laughs> That's really interesting. I think, so we're all online right now and I think the plan is to adopt a model like what you guys were just discussing whenever we are able to open which no one is super optimistic about when that will be but my big concern what about going back on campus was having to wear I teach English learners and having to wear a mask would be super hard I mean now we have all these internet issues but at least like when they are connected and the internet is good they can understand pretty well I, I my concern is that when we do get back and I also think putting on a mask like I, I personally have adjusted to it but I feel like if I was at school trying to teach with the mask on I think my effective filter would be my own effective filter would be way up and maybe students would too just because you're kind of like on um I don't know I think what do you mean by that your affective filter would be up in... yeah if that's an ELD an English learner term maybe it's yeah. not as <laughs> widely used as I thought like maybe one of the, I'm just done <laughs> one of the things that they tell you to do is like because learning English is so stressful and kids often feel like they're drowning they get they they put oh. up what's called an effective a effective with an a yeah um but, uh and you're the as a teacher your goal is to lower that so they feel comfortable taking academic risks um, okay. with language so I think for me, putting a mask on and being in a classroom, and maybe you two can speak to that. I feel like there's just so, you're juggling so many balls at one time. It would be hard to be as vulnerable as you are in your own home in front of a screen. That's just what I was thinking, but I don't know. Yeah, at the same time though, I feel like it's more important than ever to be vulnerable because of that. You know, so sharing, like when we're writing, I'll try to read some of my writing and uh, you know, try to be, I don't know, well, honest. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, it's definitely different with a mask. I, it's hard at first. It was like, uh, uh, because you're, you're always breathing when you're teaching, so, well, breathing more cause you're talking, you know, and, uh, but I, I'd say you kind of get used to it and I have to articulate even more, I guess. I had a great a drama teacher in our school, like is talking about how he's going to do his drama class. And I, and I, it's got me thinking, right? Mark Federelli, I'm going to give him a shout out. He, um, he's he has great productions and stuff, but he was talking about how now when he's got to teach his drama, what he's going to do is just do more with his eyes. And I, I'm like really thinking like, that's, that's what you got. You know, you really got to yeah. start thinking about what are my eyes doing? And that could be just a fun place to go, you know? It does make me think of that actually communication with eyes has really been standing out to me. And I think like, you know, women who wear, uh, you know, hajibs and stuff, uh, I think like that's definitely something that you would, that's a communication thing that I haven't really thought of as much. It's super I, I, important in New York City, you know, like the coming into the shared space thing and you better smile with your eyes. Yeah. If you're gonna make the impression that you that you want to make because you don't have your mouth to, it is it is hard. I've noticed with the in-person kids, you know, I, I think as teachers, at least I do, I, you know, you you get so much feedback from body language, and and when they're sitting at a desk and sitting down, you rely on those facial expressions, and it's been a struggle to to figure out sort of where they are at times um, without that, and so. It, I think it would be fun to work in uh, how, how do we communicate with our eyes in any class, you know, like um, uh, just trying to be as expressive as you can. Uh, they, might, they might have a fun time with it um, and it, it could get you a little bit farther down the road with, with being able to pick up on some of the smaller things that kids are trying to communicate to you. Melanie's theater has like really intense eye stuff they do. I was trying to look for something to share, <laughs> like an exercise. Cool. Yeah, Kathakali. Exactly. <laughs> Kathakali, right? Doesn't it? Yes. That's a lot yeah. of eyebrows. Yeah. Kathakali. Yeah, but, but when Jessica spoke up, I, I started thinking about some of our students who are like, you know, who you're looking at all the time. You know? Yeah. So. You know what I mean? I, so I, I was just, how, I was I just thinking that's about going to happen. What? Hood. Yeah. What am I going to do with the hood? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so deal, dealing dealing with these issues with youth who don't want to be there, right? Who <laughs> who don't trust? Who who you know? Who have yeah. been hurt? You know? I mean, it's so maybe don't want to connect. Yeah. Right. I I mean I guess. I don't know what else to say about that, but it's different, right? And you got to kind of respect, I don't want to look at you right now. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> where should we go? I, um, I have a question. Good. Please jump in. <laughs> I, I wanted to leave this open and yeah, but I also want to, I want to get to planning and doing stuff together too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was wondering about what kind of personal writing people are have because we don't have act like access to our students in the way that we did before. If anyone is assigning like journal and like daily journal entries, Rich, I know that was something you talked a bit about before. Um, and if youth voices or now comment or something would be an appropriate place to somehow share like because all the all, kids are kind of going through a lot of the same things and I wonder if there's if there's anything there in terms of pe people writing I just was talking to a student about it today that's like I was like you need to we need to work on your writing what are some things you could do and the kid was just like oh I have tons of journals I'm just going to write down everything I do every day and we, mm -hmm. then you can read it and we can talk about it and um so I don't I don't uh, got me thinking about like because I know this was something we talked about in the spring too, just like recording this historic moment or moments that we're living through, the moment that never ends. <laughs> um, if I, yeah, so I'd love to hear what people are doing in terms of that or if you have ideas. So what affordances Youth Voices gives for even for very informal for writing? Takes writing opportunities. And then also what um, affordances other platforms give and then 
is there a way to take what's written there and pick and choose and uh, plunk into, well, it's, I mean, that's what we do um, with text-based commentary in now comment. That's less formal. And then we have them make longer posts out of it in Youth Voices. But um, Anna, you're talking about um, not so much text-based. So where? I heard her asking for writing ideas. Right, but uh, re response to literature, not so much. Oh, I see. That's what you mean by not text. Well, text. last week we stopped with this. Like Paul was re was talking about the sort of avatars and profiles in Youth Voices, and like that's one place that I keep thinking about. Like, oh, you know, like it's it's an old digital practice like when people first got online that's what we all did we all like talked about our avatars and created our digital identities and all that kind of stuff and and so i sort of wondered like should we return like what happens if we return to that a little bit and some of that like you know i don't know i don't know if that's helpful but it's one piece of writing that i've been thinking could could transfer across platforms and and not just writing, you so, could like make an avatar or whatever too. Yeah, and 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 on on all of these places on Zoom, there there yeah, are places to put your avatar, and on you voices there is too. There's a, there's there is a um, an activity page where you can put your your avatar, and then there's an image behind it you can add as well. Um, Luis Valso's kids always do that. And it was like, it gives them a feeling of ownership on the site, I think. Um, but so yeah, those are some possibilities. Is there a playlist for doing that, Paul? I don't think there was. No, there was one started. Okay. So, yeah, we, yeah we, could, we could pull that together though pretty fast. Um, so quicker writing. Yeah. Um, quick writes, like I'm trying to figure out how to do, it. Uh, independent reading in um, remote and what is coming to my mind is um, a lot of ancillary uh, activities um, that provide accountability for whether you're reading but um, in lieu of just reading uh, in the same space making that space sacred together so I'm thinking okay they could um, they can write entries about their books in youth voices they can um so karen could i, book I just talks. Can, what about writing short povs point of view writing about the point of view of your character or whether you would want to be a friend of your character like really really short karen i wanted to identify that sacred space you were saying you begin most or all of your classes with what 20 half an hour 20 minutes half an hour of reading and that's the sacred space you were referring to. So you're trying to figure out how to do that in an online, is that? Yeah. I just, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if that was clear, but yeah, it, it was to me when I heard it. But, um, and so what have you come up with? <laughs> um, so, um, so Mondays they would do, um, someone they would um, prepare they would um, work on the book talks that they're going to give um, if you're scheduled for October 23rd then you can work on your book talk today in order to get ready or Tuesday they can um, uh, write a um, youth voices entry Wednesday they can comment on somebody else's Thursday they can go into the New York Public Library website and um, uh, choose a book. But these are all activities that actually take you away from reading. They're all um, delightful and foment independent reading. But, and get, you know, you have kids saying, I want to read that book. I want to read it next. Um, but uh, that's in, in, in person, online. So, but actually we prioritize just reading, like not loading it down with having to write about Mm -hmm. the book so how do we what um, about what about using the small groups mm -hmm. functionality and allowing kids 
adults who are reading the same book to go to that group and read to each other or do some choral reading, you know? I mean, I think, I think that's a possibility on Zoom that is underexplored, right? And the, also that you, yeah. that's unique. You cannot do it so well uh, in, a classroom, in, a, yeah. in a classroom. Like you have to bail on the, um, you have to interrupt uh, your sacred space that you're making all 28 of you. Whereas uh, this is built for Zoom. Talk. Like what do you do, what's your book talk? What do you have them do? I chose this book because I'm um, actually in the middle of it. Um, I usually have them stand um, and present um, in when we're in person. Um, uh, um, it's different from what I, so sentence starters and Q and A after and a sign up, pass around a calendar. I wanna go first, I wanna go first. I wanna get this over with in September. So, so like one person goes a day, is that right? Or? Yeah. Okay. And they read from the book too, I suppose. Yeah. Nice. And nice. One of the things I'm trying to encourage with my independent reading is for them to go ahead and choose the same book as their buddies, no matter what section they're in. Because I think that, uh, you know, I, Paul, you were talking about Zoom. I thought you were talking about no comment for a second as far as common books. But, um, you know, giving them that opportunity to work across what Brian said. I, I have numerous people who say, like, I'm not with my friends in my face-to-face -face mm -hmm. cohort, you know. And so looking for those opportunities for them to come together. That seems like one space that's a good idea. Have little book clubs. You know, um, Karen, I'm thinking about my doing a book club too. And it's interesting, like you, I'm marinating on these ideas too about, uh, and, and thinking about what Anna said about what are you going to do, you know, for writing prompts in the beginning. Um, but I'm, I'm, I have so many ideas in my head and I'm kind of just like really thinking about just doing different things now. But, you know, like a book talk, I was thinking like by the end of the first marking period to have them do a book talk about something they read in our class and beforehand, whoever wanted to could do a book talk about whatever they've ever read. But once you start generating that stuff, it'd be a nice activity, I think, to just share something. Once you start kind of generating a mass of stuff, you could start soliciting volunteers and start filling some classroom space with genuine, you know, sharing of stuff. You know, I, I, I want to think about like how, whatever I do in these first couple of weeks, for example, whatever like silly prompt I start with, I haven't even thought about yet. Well, I have, but I haven't decided. Um, thinking about like, maybe I could do two of the prompts that I'm thinking of. So I don't have to scrap one. And then, you know, we could share those over throughout the week or, you know, and finding spaces to do that. So um, they could um, record. There are some kids who are too shy to do it. So fine. You are going to make it a small movie of it. Um, flip grade. You have to do, I, I was thinking this for sure. They're going to do a movie in the first two weeks of something because I need to see their face. And I, I, I refuse to not know them that way. And I think that's vitally important. And like, go do that wherever you want. I haven't yet figured out what the prompt is. I haven't figured, I don't even care. Maybe it'll be anything. But I mean, I just, I think, I, the first thing today when I showed my welcome screen, I said, you know what? I gotta go grab a picture. And I just put a picture of me there just to say like, that's what I look like, <laughs> just so you know. Then they can post it, uh, the Flipgrid on Youth Voices. Mm -hmm. Oh, Flipgrid, my, my, my six-year-old loved Flipgrid last year. Uh, so I, yeah, <laughs> Flipgrid, yes. I know a teacher who's like she's working with her kids to develop um, playlists for for each of their like music playlists for each of their classes, and so they're um, but they have to pitch their songs like they have to like everybody has to agree that these are the songs for the class, so it becomes a writing you know kind of digital discourse thing. They come up with their playlist and then they can use that playlist while they're like studying or like if they're doing something asynchronous or have to have quiet anyway it's like a shared piece um, I thought that was a nice 
idea. It, this is not a fully formed idea, but <laughs> building on these things, I've been, um, I read a piece in EdSurge this week, which was in interviews with like a dozen first year teachers whose first year was last year. And the title of the piece is something like, well, if I could survive this, mm -hmm. I can survive anything. And there are several things I loved about this piece. One was that each teacher had this like, they had two photos of their classroom. No, a photo of their classroom, a photo of where they taught from in, in shelter in place teaching, a picture of themselves. And then they had a set of questions they asked everybody to answer. So they had this little profile, like, I mean, all the questions were not appropriate for your class. Like, do you have roommates? And what's your salary? Which I thought was not appropriate for anyone, by the way. So there are a couple of things that came out of reading that for me. One was, like I would, if I had a classroom, actually getting ready to do some work with some K teachers in their first five years, like I would love to have a slide deck of every one of my classes because you're seeing them irregularly and at weird times. It just told me this much stuff about them. Like here's their photo. Here's where they usually do schoolwork in their house. Here's their pet or whatever. A, a photo of them without their mask on and some things and maybe like a slide jet deck for each class that would be accessible to all of them so they could see each other you could see them and then the other i love the like way that sounds oh, and i know oh, i'm sorry you weren't done oh sorry the only the, the only other thing i was going to say is i would love a piece like that to read with kids because the teachers in it ran the gamut from this solidified my belief that I am a teacher for life to, I don't know if I can ever do that again. And I think the other thing about that was like giving the opportunity to say, what was the last six months like? What, when you hear other people talk about their experience, what resonates with you? What, you know, like, so I think I'm gonna use that piece within this project I'm doing with teachers and ask them to take a line for a walk, like choose one, thing that somebody said about their experience and write about why it spoke to you. Yes, Janet, I'll put a link to it right now. But um, so, uh, Jessica, I talked a long time and you were gonna say something too. I was just um, really liking that idea. And at the same time, in the other ear, hearing my boss nix everything for privacy. But I, you'd see each other. Is there other a way we could say again? In person, you'd see each other. And you'd do some getting to know you activity like that. I know. I know. But it's a yep. different challenge when you're in a home environment. It depends on the district. It depends on, on what you see. Um, we right. did a whole, a whole whopping three days in school, in virtual school. Our By the way, hi, Janet. So thank yes. you, Karen. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hi, it's Janet. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> college class with who just announced that he was in my elementary school classroom I'm like <laughs> right, anyway um, he uh, our challenge is getting kids to turn the camera on so that's a that that is not in my recommendation rich I'm listening to your enthusiasm you're gonna get some pretty crappy flip, flip grids unless you wait about three weeks because kids really feel um, this is a huge for my students, at least, a building of trust. And all of a sudden, I mean, I have freshmen that have never even been on our campus. And even though we've mentored all summer, I haven't. I don't know who they are. Um, and it's a lot of trust factor to put your personal life. I mean, it's hard for me. Like, I purposefully don't have a Zoom background so my kids can see my dog, who's now sick of me not picking him up. So here he is. Um, and, I teach that way, you know, and, and I snack and whatever. I mean, I purposefully do things to let them know, yeah, we're at home and yeah, I want you here. But I think if we, in our enthusiasm of creating a classroom, I have learned to be very careful in respecting their space um, and their willingness and their trust to, to put their thing on. Our rule is you have to flash it. I mean, and I'm working right now in a variety of English classrooms supporting, so I don't have a lot of control of what's going on yet notice the word yet because I will um, but one particular student said I don't really one teacher literally said the other day I don't care if I see your face you can show the, the ceiling 
and his tone was unintended. But for me, I was like, I can't believe how you just said that because I, his intention 100% was, I don't want to stress you out. Like, you know, you don't feel like you have to show me, but we have to have our cameras on. But the way he said that, I was like, wow, that's going to take a little bit to recover from. So Rich, just you and I are both like, we're like very similar souls, I feel like. And we're super enthusiastic. And, and that's what I've learned in these first couple of days, because I wanted to do the same thing, like, let's go and let's, you know, pick this up. And, and even having them do a Bitmoji virtual locker for which is 10 of my kids, I have to give them a week. Like, you know, we meet an advisory once a week. And so- uh, Could you week, slow down and say, what is that again? A Bitmoji virtual Oh, so locker. Bitmoji is the new thing, everybody. I mean, it's not new, but it's like a little cartoon of yourself. Okay. So I, I can share that with you, I'll pull it up, but it's, um, it's like a locker. And then I'm having the kids, it's like a, it's like a, just another way of doing a PowerPoint, you know, a thing about yourself, like put in a picture of your dog, put in a picture of things that are about you, what lock, you know, what do you have that you want to share links to music that you like, just a way for them to compartmentalize themselves. And then I'm going to share these lockers with each other and then start building writing from there because I'll be able to see kind of, you know, what's your family, what, what are things that are important to you? How can I get this link? But it wasn't something that we could do quickly because um, I really want some more thought with it. And I feel this go around our kids because they know we're not, we're in a big, California, we're in a big state of flux. Yes, we're opening, no, we're not. Yes, we are. Some districts in our county are wide open. Yeah, nobody, nobody else is. Everybody's yeah. in this. I, mean, New York, I know New York, I just saw like, welcome to the 21st, right? So uh, we saying. have it like, we're standing unified where I teach. We're, as far as I know, nine weeks out of even remotely opening kids. But then on the news, they just said, well, some kids can come back. So it's a lot of chaos. So our number one thing is to establish routine. So kids show up every single day and are with us every single day. We have to teach for three hours a day. I mean, um, or 90 minute courses, depending on the number of courses they take, it's a different road. So that's a long answer for be mindful because this is really going to be the long haul, regardless of how we all would love to be back. We know it's Anna, going to be I was just kind of curious, like if, so Anna just shared like a slideshow, if people were asked to do something like of their own creation, not within a framework, but like, do a slideshow. You don't have to show any pictures even, just about you. Uh -huh. Does that, does that like? I think that we're, I mean, as long as they have time, like more than a period, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they, they have a time to, to reflect on it. Like to share one or two things in that first period. And then for you, like for me to broadly share myself, like so they can see, like I break every norm. I sit and I have my coffee and I have my dog and I make sure something happens. So everybody feels more like, yes, I can put my sound on. Yes, I can put my, you know, my room on. I just think we have to be mindful. And some, and if you already have relationship with your kid or you're getting to see them part-time, that's a huge thing. We, last week, we, I spent three days, two days loading up the back seat of everybody, you know, with their Chromebook and that kind of stuff. So I got to see some kids and I, they want that connection. They want that, but they want that good first impression too. So I just think the quality of what you'll get is better if you wait. But, you know, so, that could be my kids, my population of kids too. No, I, I, it's different for kids, different kids and different trusts and, different, you know, I mean, yeah, I was, I was bringing that up earlier too. Yeah. I, Anna, do you want do you want to sh share what that was? And I, I can show it on the screen. The slideshow idea. Sure. Um, I shared this because I did it with my English learner students. So I think it's it's pretty straightforward. But I basically you did it now, or you did it before? I actually did the. I do. The, I've done this. So I'm in my third year teaching. I've done this all three years. I. Okay use it as an introductory slideshow so the kids know a little bit about who I am and then um, this year and then the students do them um, and this year I just asked them to up so I'm so sorry this is like more than you ever need to know about me but it's very, it's very simple so I just like remove the pictures of myself and then there's a it's a it's easy to pop into Google Classroom as a, I'd be happy to share the template with them. I mean you you share a template with them and then yeah. Yeah, then, yeah. So really all they got to do is just type in some of their it's really really simple. I feel like it kind of and these are kids who sometimes feel uncomfortable sharing 
stuff about their lives. So the last set is like their choice and they can, I have some prompts for things that they can choose to share. So traditionally this was an in-person slideshow. <laughs> now they're doing it um, stop digitally, obviously. Um, but, yeah. you mean, how are they doing it digitally? You mean they're sharing it? How? They're gonna screen, we're gonna try it tomorrow. I haven't actually had them present them yet. Um, we just, they just finished them last week. So they're gonna screen share and present. I think I'm gonna have one kid go each, um, each day because they can take a long time. But this is a small class of kids who already know each other. I think it's valuable even, like I had, you could have students make this and then they never have to share it with anyone except you. If, if the privacy is a concern or, you know, mm -hmm. they're not comfortable. Um, I think the student version, the t I can find the template in a second. It had, I'm sorry, this picture of me lobstering okay. with my sister. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it off if you want. <laughs> so cute. I mean, the student ones are actually amazing, but I obviously don't feel like I can share that in this setting. Um, the, the template has a couple other slides about how they feel about distance learning, which has been really interesting. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, the idea is that they'll screen share and then go through the slides, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't know. Well, the whole notion of having youth come to a Zoom to show something, to do something themselves, as opposed to, you know, come to a teacher doing it, is not a simple thing to accomplish, but I think is the goal, right? Yeah. Um, I did want I did want to say that I, just that that if I heard I heard you say sharing these publicly could be an issue, um, but figuring out how to have a public version and then um, is worth might be worth doing, and then you can just get um, if you hit publish to the web here. You get mm -hmm. the embed code right here. These can easily go up as a post on Youth Voices, right? Cool. Um, so that's a way to kind of share things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thinking through the privacy issue. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I, I just picking up on what um, Tanya said, that line for a walk idea, you know, a, another teacher that I was working with this summer was like going to sort of have kids do something like this, introduce themselves, and then start to map connections that they see. So you kind of have this like interactive piece, you know, with this, or that line for a walk thing is a nice way to sort of like, like take a connection someone else made, you know, so trying to think about some of those might be interesting in a youth voices context too. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing about an activity like that and Zoom is um, you you could do that as homework and you could use the chat function to just put the line that you chose and people could respond in chat, you know, like as a 10 minute warm up or the beginning of class thing, like here's the line that I picked out of that reading that we shared, just, just type the line without saying anything about it and then people can respond to each other's or I don't know. Those things that build the community of yeah learners in this weird space. It's hard to do that with artifacts in a real face-to-face -face space. Actually, like online, in some ways, make that a little easier. Sometimes, yeah. Or could, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about like what can you, what can you ask kids to write and share in the chat? You know, that's like a six word memoir about your first week of school, uh, you know, three adjectives that describe how you feel today, the kinds of things that let everybody see what other people are saying, connect with people somewhat, but that are short and fast enough that they can serve that kind of getting people settled space that you would have in a face-to-face -face classroom as well. I felt icebreakers, this is, you know, I had my first day today, icebreakers were a little more tentative today, you know, like, I think kids were just a little, and granted, it was just like 10 minutes, and it was just, like, I just said, what's a song that's been getting you by, you know, yeah. I've been listening to that Rihanna Rain right now, and I, I mean, not really, the uh, Rain by, uh, 
uh, Lady Gaga and but they kind of they were just like I don't I don't really know you know like I I think there's yeah. I think there's a big shell shock I, I, you know you you know Chris and and Brian you've been there right I I just feel a shell shock right off the bat. Well, so many of them expected to be back, yeah. and there's that hesitancy. We're we're trying, or I'm we our staff, and then myself really are trying to purposefully say. For the next nine weeks, even if it's a big fat lie, <laughs> but the next nine weeks, we are committed to being online in this space, doing this, completing this course. Mm -hmm. So we're setting this expectation that we're not going to have the chaos because that's what they are seeking. They're really, my kids are mm -hmm. like, are we really doing this? Do we really need to be here? Are we, you know, there was a lot of what we, and a lot of people refer to crisis teaching and if I hear one more time of unprecedented, you know, all that nonsense, it's like they, <laughs> they live in that unprecedented moment. And I'm like, no, this right. is teaching, this is digital, this is what we're gonna do. And we're really well planned. And that seems, now that we're on day three, seems to be resonating and we're getting a little bit more involvement. Now, that being given one class I walked into, everybody's cameras were off. And I had to like, when we got into the chat room with them, because we've been doing, we're trying to do that kind of norm and having chat rooms so kids come together and we've set up videos and you know what do we expect and funny things and having them start to work with each other and that in itself is a challenge the chat's always a challenge especially with the freshmen because they're just so silly you know they get on there and they think they're on well, i don't know where they think they are but um, <laughs> i think it's you know it's just that learning curve that they want the we don't even know the platforms anymore <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say it's no that's uh, cool i like <laughs> it's whatever they're doing but I, they want that connection. That's how I feel. But I also feel like they're looking for a sense of safety and permanence. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris, yeah. I think you have like the best thing when I think about the setup of like some, they're here part with you and part at home. So you're keeping that safety, but you have that physical connection with them. That's what I hope we go to. I mean, that's really where my heart feels like would be the best for the kids at this point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, here's hoping we, <laughs> we're still doing it. You never know. I mean, it's, we're in week three. And so, you know, hopefully everybody's been being virus free. Uh, so yeah, it, it has been nice uh, to be back. I'm just holding my breath at this point in time, you know. Mm. You know literally. The, oh, sorry. No, please jump in. Go ahead. I was curious if people, if their school is testing students. Oh yeah, students good question. Coming in. Yeah, Brian, you want to take that one? Yeah, we uh, we have them do. We use Skyward, and so there's a health check that they're supposed to do before they arrive. That's a survey. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of like just questions like, "Have you had any symptoms?" That kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then you get you kind of get cleared. <laughs> And for the first couple of days, we had people right at the front doors asking every single kid, have you done your health check? And if they said no, they'd take their temperature. And then if that was okay, they'd let them, they'd let them go in. But um, recently, they've, they've resorted to calling uh, every student down who had, didn't successfully do that, which has been quite a disruption the last couple of days, because there's like, you know, 50 kids <laughs> that haven't done it. And so they go out and they do it. And so I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we call that... I don't know. It's almost like checking boxes. I had to do that for my daughter for a practice once. And I went through and I looked at the questions. And I'm like, well, this doesn't, what is this telling us? Um, but yeah, it's in place. I mean, it's, it's something we're able to say that we're doing. Um, but there but isn't, not, there isn't a like 10% or 20% are being actually tested. No, no, no. That's the proposal in New York City. Uh, oh, random testing. Yeah. I think the safest place for our kids is actually in our school right now because we have such, it's so regulated. You know, I, I'm driving away and, and I pass a, a gaggle of kids and they don't have their masks on and they're all hanging out and they're only, you know, 50 yards off campus. So. I was going to ask you what the other kids do who aren't in school. Like, are, are cool. they home? Yes. Yeah. Or are they hanging out in gaggles? <laughs> They're they're home they're home when they're on the Zoom you know but um, like you know I, I I just see that's my worry is that you know the 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 problem's almost going to be 
that, you know, they're not thinking of this the right way where, um, you know, they figure out oh, we're back in school, right? So then that means we can kind of hang out and that's not really the case. So you're back in school, but you still need to min minimize this. And so getting that through some of them uh, is, is, I think it can be a challenge. So that's, you know, like Chris is saying, he's, he's holding his breath. And that's, that's kind of my worry is, is um, you know, we, we can, we can influence them. Our, our Dean has been uh, saying, do the right thing. And he's like, you know, willing down, like, put your mask on, be distanced to all this stuff to saying, hey, just do the right thing. And, and I like that. And we can say that. But, you know, when they're out of earshot, and, and being a teenager takes over, uh, that's my worry. Yeah. I, I wanted to mention that um, when we went to all online with the class I was teaching in March, I kept an activity that we always did, which, which allowed each, each young person in the class, and there were sometimes 14 people there, uh, and sometimes more, um, to say one thing they did that day that makes them feel good about themselves, which is a, a prompt that I got decades ago from a trauma doctor. Anyway, um, about and and what what's wonderful about that is that if you like repeat something and it becomes a routine like that they kind of come to the next class thinking oh my gosh i'm gonna have to say one thing i did that makes me feel good about myself and, I, and that's a very careful sentence by the way um you, you, so Anyway, but, but what was wonderful is that the class started and the first 15, 20 minutes, it felt like too long, I know, but um, was them talking, right? Their voices there and establishing that at the beginning was, was a really great thing to do, I think. So that's one thing. And we also have a Can final specific? thing to share. Yeah. Can you say it again though, Paul? Yeah, I mean, so it's not about a thing that makes you that you did that's good. I mean, that's how they hear it at first. It's something you did. So it has to be a thing you did that makes you feel good about yourself, right? Wow. So, um, like that. And, mm. there, and when you're ready, there's another round, which is an upset you feel, right? But that takes some time to get to. What's but, the what? So the second round, again, once the group has an established upset. an upset, just share an upset if you'd like to share an upset. And like, if there's no commenting, there's no response back and forth. It's just a, a round robin of sharing. All right. Have you ever done that at Youth Voices? Anyway, sorry. What do you mean? That is what we do on. No, I, I, and I can mention that Youth Voices, sometimes people think it has to be this really carefully written, crafted thing. Um, it's okay to put up, you know, six words and uh, about yourself too, really fast. Quick posts on youth voices are quite possible and, and you're know, welcomed. And the more developed ones too. <laughs> Anybody else have any thoughts to close us off here? Or you've been wanting to say something? So, um, our whole school, 9 through 12, is going to have two weeks of orientation. Um, even though we're starting late, the, uh, though we teachers have been back since Monday, September, August 31st, the kids won't arrive until, ostensibly until, um, is it the 16th online? Um, but then from the 16th to um, the 30th, we will have an orientation. So, um, so now I'm rethinking uh, um, my whole, whole, whole class book. Um, but isn't some of the stuff we talked about tonight about orientation too? Though? Oh, totally. Yeah, All yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what you're saying. Cool. And, and I, I see Jessica on screen. <laughs> we have been working and planning we have like a week sort of sketched out for, um, and then we're playing other things for Day of the Dead, which is November 2nd. And we'd love to kind of figure out how other people can bring eulogies and we can do a, a Day of the Dead celebration together. So just put that somewhere in your calendar, if that makes some sense. Jessica, you we want to say We can start with that next week. Okay, we can do that. 
Any other thoughts quickly? Did you guys read my comment on your We did, now comments? yes, it started hilarious. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Karen, one thing I, I would suggest you might want to think about, because I think it's free, um, is VoiceThread. Um, if you wanted to um, use the slide presentation idea, um, even if you wanted to have students make one individual slides and then put together a, you know, a class, um, a class voice thread or individual voice threads. The nice thing about voice thread is that students have the opportunity to record something on their slide. Um, they have the opportunity to respond to each other if you choose to let them. Um, and they can respond in text, they can respond verbally, they can re re record a little video. So it, and then you can link their voice, I'm sure you could link the voice thread to youth voices. Just yeah, you, like, can, you can embed voice yeah. thread. So, so, yep, yep, yep. Great, great so, suggestion, thanks. The nice thing about voice thread is it has a lot more options than just Google Slides too. Well, I, I wrote this in the chat. I, I love VoiceThread, and I just realized that I think a lot of universities have it because it's UDL compliant, compliant, which is really interesting to me. That like, oh right, that's why they're using it because they have these LMSs that like aren't don't do that much. And um, so anyway, I just think it's interesting. Like I went to a UDL compliant uh, or VoiceThread UDL thing, and I was like, oh, I can see why VoiceThread's designed as a way. It's, it's meant to be multimodal mm -hmm. to su support accessibility. So I think that's really interesting about it, and I don't see that in some of the other tools. So mm -hmm. it is. It is just to say free at first, but there is a yeah, a, it's a not, license. It's freemium. It, it's yeah. yeah, but it's. <laughs> It's free in the college because the college has paid the license. Right, right. Yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not free, which is, I think is why it's fallen off K-12 mm -hmm. use. Uh, right, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Brian, did you get your question answered? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here for you, Brian. Send me, send me a list of email addresses. We'll get you set up on Youth Voices. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I can work with Chris about how best to, to do that. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thankfully, he's always just done it for me in the past. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, this has been good. I've got a running list of ideas. It sounds, sounds awesome. I'm, I'm glad cool. I was able to join tonight. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So just in a nutshell, Paul, if people wanted to bring a class onto Youth Voices. Uh, so send me an email and I'll send you a link to a Google Doc or uh, Google Sheet that you'll send the email addresses with their first names and we'll figure it out from there. It's it's pretty simple. It is you youth and you could do it yourself too, but I recommend this version, this way of doing it because uh, it's because he ends up redoing yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's just smoother, faster. We'll do that, that again. That have you know. graduated, do you want to know like who did, should be? Is there a limit like on the number of students? Should I go into health sciences and like clear out? There is not a limit. No, no. Okay. I mean that's I that's one of the access to that email anymore, so they're not gonna. I just we, didn't. I didn't want. I didn't know if it was something that would help you or not. No, one of the one of the features of Youth Voices is that it is um, an always growing garden and everything that's there is there. And then, you know, every once in a while I get an email from somebody who's a sophomore in college and they say, oh my God, I published that five years ago. Could you please take that down? And yeah. we do. So they do have access still. And so, yeah, so, but in theory, it's all there forever unless they want it down. So <laughs> that was a longer answer than you actually <laughs> asked for that. Just thought I'd try that. Thank you all. Um, let's try to keep going like this and we'll keep talking. Um, talk to you soon. Stay in touch. Hi, Peggy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.